Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina visiting Sparks Toyota and I'm checking out a 2018 Toyota Prius in the four touring trim level. Now the Toyota Prius is one of the most common hybrid vehicles on the road. It's also one of the most reliable cars on the road as well. So let's go ahead and check it out. This Prius is sitting on 215 45 Yokohama tires wrapped around 17 inch alloy wheels with a wheel cover in black and silver. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Hypersonic Red and it's a little bit of a deeper, almost like a burgundy type red here. All right, so let's check, check out the front here. It has parking sensors across the front as well as the back. See one hidden there. So this Prius has sensors here behind the rear view mirror, little camera. You also have a sensor here. It's actually a emits a radar. It's the radar adaptive cruise control sensor just behind this emblem. So it's hidden. And the camera is mostly for the lane departure alert system with the steering assist. So it actually turn the steering wheel, which we'll look at the controls when we get behind the wheel. So the headlights are powered by LEDs for your low and your high beams in a projector tube. You also have LED fog lights at the bottom. Now the turn signals are standard bulbs. Okay, so taking a look at the profile of the vehicle, and I also want to mention the Toyota Prius is one of the most aerodynamic vehicles on the road as well. So check it out. One of the things that is more noticeable here on the side is the shape of the hood. So you can see it has kind of this flat spot there at the top, and it's very interesting and unique. Then you have a, you know, just kind of a swooping back portion right here and then a crease here on the side. So the handles are body colored. The side mirror on the top is body colored. Now the windows have not been tinted, uh, but you notice it has the black portion around the windows and it also has this portion right in here. So it kind of you know, accents the shape of the roof and elongates the, the windows there. So if you were to tint the windows, it would have this, uh, you know, these pillars here are blacked out as well. It'll have this like a teardrop or water drop effect uh, appearance there, which looks pretty neat. And of course, you know, that's the most aerodynamic thing is a, a water drop. This is what the key fob looks like. It's a proximity key system designed to where you can keep this in your pocket or in a bag and use the vehicle 100%, relock it, unlock it, all that stuff. Now it does have the lock and unlock buttons that you can press if you want to and a panic button. It also has a physical key on the inside, but as long as you have it with you, you're good to go. So as long as you have the key with you, with, as long as it's within a close proximity of the outside of this door, then you can walk up to the car, unlock it by placing your finger over these little sensor right here. See these two lines? It's actually on now, so it's giving me an indicator that it's not going to lock. But I put my finger there and lock the door. To unlock it, I simply put my hand behind the handle. It senses the key within a close proximity of this door and senses my hand position and allows me access to the vehicle. Okay, so let's take a look here on the passenger side. Okay, so the inside of the door, all black except for the handle. The handle to open the door, and then you have the handle here to close it. And this is sealed up in here, so that way uh, you can use that for a little bit of a pocket. You have a pocket down here as well. Gloss, piano black surface around your controls. And soft touch here on the arm, around your arm, all the way up to the top here, as well as here. And then you get into your hard plastics down at the bottom. Here's your threshold, manually adjusted seats. Now these are soft tech synthetic leather with a little bit of a blue stitching here, heated. 
seats. Soft and cushy and very comfortable in my book. There's the leg room. Now I'm going to put all the uh, measurements, specs, uh, volumes, all that stuff in the description. But just to give you a visual reference here, you can see not much tapering going on right here. So it's all nice and wide for your leg room. A little bit of tapering right up in there, but it's plenty of room. Then you have that gloss black with the chrome accent above it. The dashboard is a slightly soft material. Not super cushy, but it's non-reflective. And you can see the gauges, a lot of the gauges are there in the center portion, which we'll get to that shortly. Take a look at the glove compartment. It has a smooth plastic on the inside. The passenger heated seat controls are kind of hidden back in here. And then the driver is on the other side in this little, little space. The inside of the back door, as the front, you also have the soft touch surfaces here, here, and here, and then you have the hard touch surfaces at the bottom. Pocket there, as well as down in there. Now the back seat is basically a bench seat on the bottom. The back portions fold down, so you can add to your cargo space. You have an armrest with cup holders here. You can move that out of the way. Now, even with the back seat all the way back, you still have a significant amount of leg room. There's pockets on the back of the front seats. 12 volt power supply back here. A Little bit of a hump in the center, not a huge one, but you know, it still is a little one there. And the seats have the latch system. Now, it makes it easy to get to. You have this little flap, it lifts up and you can get right to them. You can see them. A lot of, a lot of vehicles, you can't see them. You have to kind of feel for them. So I like the way they did that. This is how you fold it down right there. It's real easy, like so. And you can fold down one or the other. Okay, so looking at the back of the vehicle, there at the top, you have the little shark fin antenna right there that's body colored. But just right above it, you can see there's a black portion that's not glass. So it kind of makes the glass look a little bit longer. Then the rear wiper. You even have some glass through here so you can see through that portion as well. There's your third brake light powered by LEDs. Backup camera is a little bit on the offset position. Parking sensors across the back. Now you do have a combination of LED and standard bulbs for the taillights. There's the exhaust, it's not obvious, it's not sticking out too much. Okay, so let's take a look in the cargo area. Lift up the hatch. So this one has the shade, so we can move that out of the way. We can also remove it as well. So if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, here's your cargo space, which I think is fantastic. I mean, it's much bigger and easier than the average trunk or you know a lot of trunks out there, especially a vehicle this size anyway. You have a light here on the side, a little bit of a space there on the side as well. This lifts up. You have a uh, tire inflator kit, tools to you know jack up the vehicle. Yeah, 
Now the back seats, you can fold them down one or the other. It's a 60-40 split, like I mentioned. You can fold them both down or one or the other to add to your cargo space while still, still maintaining passenger space, which is pretty good. The fuel door is locking and it's here on the driver's side. And it has the traditional cap with a little tether and a place to hang the cap on the inside of the door. On the side mirror is the blind spot monitor detector. It also serves as a rear cross traffic alert. So as you're backing out of a parking space, it'll let you know if there's vehicles coming from either side. So both side mirrors have that indicator to give you the idea of which side uh, the blind spot or the uh, traffic is coming when you're backing out. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle to start it, you just put your foot on the brake and hold it and push this button. Now, since it's a hybrid vehicle, has a little intro. Since this is a hybrid vehicle, the engine may not start when you push the button, but it'll turn on, it'll be ready to drive. Uh, it'll actually say ready up here. So it'll be ready to drive. Uh, it just uses the electricity instead of the engine at first, sometimes, depending on the situation of the car, your climate control, the battery uh, level, all that stuff. Okay, so here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You can see the floor mat hooks in place. There's your accelerator and brake pedal. Now the engine just started, so that's cool. Uh, you have a foot actuated parking brake and a foot rest over here. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch right here in the center, a little bit right to the, of the center. You can actually see it because the sun's shining in there. Just reach in and you lift it up. So reach in, kind of lift it up and over to the left. And you see it right there. Now the hood is super light. It's amazing how light this hood is. Now it does require a prop to hold it up. Now the prop's actually attached to the hood. It swings down and you'll see a little arrow here. Uh, it actually goes right into this place right there. Looking at the engine compartment here, you can see the underneath the hood is insulated. You have an insulated firewall. The strut towers are braced in with the unibody structure of the vehicle. Here's your battery that's easy to get to. It's under the hood. It also has active grill shutters. So as the air flows uh, through the vents here, uh, it can close those off depending on uh, the need, the airflow need of the engine for cooling. So that way it kind of forces the air to flow around the vehicle instead of through the engine compartment. So that helps out with aerodynamics at certain times. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the passenger side, except for it has a few more buttons. All four windows are powered one touch up and down. So we can just push it, it goes down, lift it up to go up. Now I'm gonna stop it because I just wanna show you, this one has the laminated glass. So it actually has two panes of glass with an acoustic material on the inside, a little bit of acoustic material on the center and then a pane of glass here and here. It helps out with a, you know, just makes it a stronger glass, but also it keeps the vibrations of sound from uh, entering the vehicle through the glass. And then you have door lock controls. Your side mirrors are adjusted with this little joystick. You just pick a side and you can adjust it. Power seat here for the driver. You also have a power lumbar adjust adjustment as well. To the left of the steering column, you have a dimmer switch for your interior gauges, a self-parking feature, so you can uh, push that while you're going forward if you're in a look for a spot. Actually turn the steering wheel and help you park the vehicle, parallel park. You have the traction control, which you can turn off. You also have automatic high beams, which you can turn off as well. And a tilt and telescoping steering column, and you lock it in place right here. And it's kind of right here in the center. You just reach in and pull it down. Okay, so let's take a look here on the inside. 
sitting in the driver's seat. Now it's a cold day, so I have the heated seat control on low. It's a high and low type deal, high, low, and off. And I also have the seat all the way back and all the way down, so you can tilt it, go up and down, back and forth, all that good stuff. So just gonna give you an idea of the leg room. I'm six feet tall, and this is probably maybe slightly too far back for me. Maybe I'd probably pull it up just a little bit more. And so I have the footrest there, and there's a little bit of carpet at the top. I got, I got big feet, so um, it's a little bit of a, too, the footrest is slightly too small for my foot, I guess. But, uh, but overall, I mean, the seat's comfortable, and you can see I have plenty of knee room here, especially with the seat all the way back. So let's take a, take a look at the steering wheel. It's a leather wrap steering wheel. And I really like the use of white. So this is a, more of a subtle use of white in this vehicle. So it's around on the steering wheel there on the center uh, shifter area. So it's a slightly soft to the touch surface, smooth leather, so it doesn't have that traditional leather texturing as in this simulated, you know, that kind of stuff. It's just kind of smooth. Uh, but not slippery or anything. It does have some grip to it. And then, of course, you have these grips. Okay, so the cruise control is hidden right down in here. So you turn it on by pushing that button. And once it's turned on, uh, you can set it by pulling it down, resume, go up, or pull it in to uh, cancel. It also is not the normal everyday cruise control. It's an adaptive radar cru cruise control. Uh, so once you turn, have it on, you can set your distance by pushing this button, distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. And then you have your uh, lane departure warning system uh, with lane keep assist. Uh, you can turn that feature on separately. Uh, you can have them both on, so that way you can kind of drive. And if you, you don't have to have anything, you know, your hands off the steering wheel for a few seconds and not touching the, uh, the pedals and it'll actually keep you in your lane, keep you at a set speed and keep you from getting too close to a vehicle in front of you, which is pretty neat. Now these, these uh, buttons correspond with the screen in the gauges, which we'll get to shortly. Here on the left side, uh, you have your phone controls, Bluetooth, so you can answer, hang up. You also have voice recognition, volume for your radios here, change through your uh, audio tracks or your presets here on your radio. Mode is your audio source, and then you can reset your trip using that button there. Windshield wiper controls are on the right side. Turn signal is on the left. Now you also have on your turn signal, you have your uh, headlight controls. You have daytime running light off, automatic, parking, and then headlights on. And then your fog lights are controlled here. Okay, so you notice that the normal place for um, the gauges in a vehicle are usually right there, but this one is in a higher position, more in the center part. Now, uh, it kind of helps, it's kind of like a midway point between like say a he heads up display and a regular gauge system, um, but it's in the very center. So I think it's very different, I guess, from a lot of vehicles. Okay, so you can see it has a large digital speedometer. No traditional dial gauges, so everything's digital here. So you have a digital speedometer, and it also lets you know about your, your trip, your average miles per gallon during that trip, the outside temperature, uh, how much fuel you have in the tank there, all in that one little spot. Then it has a visual uh, representation of where the power is coming from. So you have your uh, electric motor represented here, your engine represented here, and your battery level represented there. And those are roughly uh, where those things are on the vehicle. So as I put in drive and I move forward a little bit, it's going to show me which where the power is coming from. It also keeps flashing and letting me know that the sensors are on as well. So let me go, let's go ahead and put it in reverse. And back up. See the sensors are on. But it's also letting me know that the energy to power the vehicle is coming from the battery and not the engine. So uh, when the engine starts, it'll show you that it's going to the wheels, also charging the battery as well. So it kind of gives you a visual reference. Just quickly glancing at it, you can tell whether the engine's running, how much battery uh, power you have, that indicator there, and all that. It's pretty neat. 
and then it shows you what gear you're in here, digital clock, and little indicators as far as your cruise control, your parking sensors, your blind spot monitor system, letting you know they're on or off. Okay, so back to this little car. So right here, these buttons, the arrows with a little circle in the, the center and the back button, I'm gonna use those to kinda scroll through. This is part of a whole menu system. So, right now, I'm going to go to the right. So once I go to the right, you'll notice it pops up these little uh, folders here, or these little tabs at the top. So right now we're at the info screen, so that I right there. So we can scroll down from there and get more information regarding our um, miles per gallon, uh, fuel consumption, uh, drive monitor, so you've got average speed, uh, EV driving ratio, in other words, how, many, how much time are you using on electric versus uh, gas. And it's resettable, so you can reset that as part of the, the trip there. And then your more fuel economy, economy information based on trips. And then your diary, eco diary uh, on each day. And then it goes back to your energy monitor. Scrolling to the right, this is your um, navigation. So right now it's just showing a, showing a digital compass. Now if you have a destination set, you'll get more information there as far as your, your navigation. Scrolling to the right again, you know, just showing you what your radio is doing. And this is your uh, climate control. And this is the adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist information. Just kind of, you know, it'll flash one side or the other depending on if you're swerving off the road or whatever. And also the distance. So we can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you once that's set. Stored messages will show up here. And then you can go into your settings here. And it goes back to your information screen. So you can see it's kind of easy to go slide through to left to right, and then you go up and down and get more information. All right, so check out this big screen. So it's a big touch screen with soft touch buttons around the outside. And four way flashers are here temperature for your climate control front and rear defroster with your heated side mirrors turning on with your rear defroster the home button is basically you know when you push that that's going to bring you just to your navigation screen like so and where you're at in relationship to everything else you know basically you know your position is the center point when you push menu this pulls up it blurs the background which is pretty neat and then it sh pulls up these main choices here so you can get information as far as your fuel economy now you notice it keeps the map up which is nice so we can check out the energy and this is a pretty neat uh representation of what's going on so you can see your battery it's on the other screen it shows you what you're doing as far as driving this is showing you what's draining your battery whether it's driving or not so right now the climate control is on so you can see the energy is going to the climate control as i put it in drive and move forward a little bit it's going to show the electric motor is draining the energy as well All right, let's go back to the menu. Uh, we can go to the, we could put it in a specific destination for the map. We can go to our phone. I don't have a phone paired, but you have access to send and receive calls, your phone book, recent calls, send and receive text messages, hands-free as well using your phone. But let's go to the app suite here. So right now there's nothing in the Intune app suite uh, set up, but you can set it up Antune is basically um, is set up on your cell phone, so that's not set up yet on this particular vehicle. Let's just see if it shows anything on the phone. Yeah, it's not going to show up anything now. And let's go to uh, destination, just to see you there. So we can uh, save addresses. We can have presets here. We'll put in our phone, our home address. I'm going to have a whole address book. We can find emergency locations. 
intersections and we could just view the map that kind of stuff now I, thought, I think it's kind of weird having the map down here and up there but it's interesting let's go into settings kind of go through that see what's in there all right so you notice down here it says climate control so we can hit that and we can adjust the climate control um, our fan speed we can put on automatic fan speeds control here where we want the air to blow is there and then we have eco for heat and cool and that will save a little bit of uh, fuel or energy in the battery and will eventually you know save fuel also you can push this and it'll keep the climate control on the front more than the back and when i push it it gives me a visual reference up there saying you know it's only for the front now let's say you have some people in the back and they want to be a backseat driver and tell you how to drive well you can hold the climate control hostage uh so that way they uh they have to straighten up and fly right and leave you alone so i think that's pretty cool all right so the radio you can push that we can see your presets here we can go to source AM, FM, satellite radio. You have USB, iPod, Bluetooth, and auxiliary inputs. Let's go back to the satellite radio. We can always turn the audio off, so if we don't want to hear anything, but you know, can't turn the screen off necessarily, but uh, the whole thing, but you can turn the audio off, the audio portion off, and then you have a volume um, touch buttons there. So you notice there's no physical knob to turn as far as your volume. You have it on your steering wheel and you have it there on the right side of the touch screen. Okay, so down here is your shifter, your drive mode. So we could put, let's push drive mode. You have power mode, eco mode, and normal. Cycles through. And then you have EV mode, which will, you know, Kind of force it to use electric power temporarily a very sh short amount of time and then the, here's the shifter so the shifter is kind of small and uh, non-traditional so you push it hold it to the le left goes into neutral push it up is reverse and check out the backup camera you know you notice the backup camera only takes up a small portion of the screen and it's a wide angle view and the ha has uh, fixed guidelines there. Push it over, push it down to drive. And to put it in park, we just push this button. Now, if the vehicle's in drive, there's this B right here. This is for um, braking. So this is to, it uses a regenerative braking system, like in the wheels. So that way it uses the forward momentum of the vehicle to recharge the battery now this is useful for going down hills uh, you wouldn't want to necessarily use this going up hills or going um, you know especially uphill I mean maybe a little bit on on flat surfaces or whatever but this will actually slow the vehicle down sort of like downshifting um, is what this is now it only only works while you're in drive of course Here's the heated seat control for the driver's seat. So it's a high and low and then the center portion is off. So this one has the wireless charger. So if you were to have a phone that's capable, a lot of phones are capable of um, you know, wireless charging, you just place it on this pad here, make sure it's turned on with that button, and it'll charge the phone, even if it's in the case. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, like, directly on the surface like a rubberized surface but you know just put your phone there and turn it on and it just charges you don't have to plug it in or anything so that's pretty cool now it charges slightly slower than a direct connection but it's still you're able to charge the phone just by laying it there so i thought that was pretty neat cup holders are here and has these little articulating arms here to take up the space for different size cups There's your USB auxiliary inputs and a 12 volt power supply. Now the armrest is quite long and it's soft to the touch. Now it bottoms out quite fast, sort of like the armrest on the door. 
um, but it is soft to the touch and it's a really good it's kind of a good height for me anyway just resting my arm on it and it goes forward quite a way so that way it supports your arm even if you have the seat up um, it gives you that extra room there depending on how you have the seat and it opens up to the side like so has this little tray that comes out this is kind of like a basically this is going to get cluttered up with stuff it's kind of like the junk drawer of the vehicle so they have this little tray so you can actually keep some kind of order in here as far as you know finding something anyway so you don't have to dig through the entire compartment to find something you can keep your quick access stuff in this little tray and i like the way it's removable and you can you know clean it and put it back in um, the bottom portion has like this felt lining this at the very bottom but the rest of it's smooth plastic Rear view mirror is an auto dim rear view mirror. You can turn that feature on or off here. And then you have your home link garage door opener controls at the base. Tap lights. You can turn on all your interior lights. Turn them all off or have them turn on with the door here. Now I'm gonna turn the headlights on and there's a little light right in here. It's a little ambient light that shines very soft light that shines here in the center of the vehicle so um, at nighttime you know just kind of gives you a little bit of tiny bit of moonlight type light in here so that way you got your bearings you're not you know bumping into things or trying to find stuff um, but it, that's I think that's pretty cool a lot, a lot of vehicles have this um, but not everybody's aware of that little ambient light and then this opens up and you have a place to put your shades now it's kind of small so it's I don't know it depends on I guess it depends on how big your sunglasses are it looks kind of small to me but it does go in there a little ways but if you have big Hollywood sunglasses it I don't know if it's gonna fit you have to find out and it has that same felt lining in the back kind of like a, full, a pool table type felt the visors have mirrors and lights and they do not extend out Okay, so let's look at the visibility in the back. So this is pretty neat. One of those vehicles that has a secondary back glass. So you can see between the headrests back there. Now, the headrests are getting in the way. So if you don't have any passengers, you can always fold down the seats. And in that way, um, you know, you can have a little bit better visibility. But uh, at bare minimum, this is what you got. And so you can see the pillars get in the way a little bit but overall pretty good pretty good of course you have the blind spot monitor the parking sensors the backup camera to help you out as well because of course once you put passengers in here you know they're they're gonna get in the way especially if they big, have big hairdos or whatever so you know the technology helps out with that all right so there you have it 2018 toyota prius Thank you for watching and thank you to Sparks Toyota here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for allowing me to show off another awesome vehicle and I'll see you guys next time.